Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Hello and welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. We are here to radiate light today with Wendy Garrett. Um, Wendy is an author uh, and a medium and a channel. Yes, Mm -hmm. channel, yeah. yeah. And an energy worker. Um, So Wendy first started receiving messages from a nightlight, like a common nightlight in her house. And when was that, like the 90s? December 1997. Wow, December 1997. So started receiving messages through a nightlight that was blinking in her home. And I'm sure that if you have any type of light or electronics in your house, that's one of the first signs that you might have some sort of energy or entity that is trying to communicate because they can manipulate energy so easily that, um, you know, that's often a really common way for them to try to communicate with us. So anyway, welcome, Wendy. Thank Thank you you so much for being here. Thank you. Now, you brought a copy of your book, and I have a copy of it at home. Yeah. And so share the title again. It's Talking to Nightlights. uh, Talking to Nightlights. Yeah, Channeling Energy and Awakening for Spiritual Insight. What happened was I wasn't um, really clued in that the nightlight was going to go anything beyond blinking. It just didn't stop blinking and and interacting and it wasn't supposed to be doing any of that. The first time it started was with a nightlight that was supposed to be on only if it was dark then the nightlight comes on. Right, a light sensitive. Right, Right. well it didn't, it was on when it was supposed to be off. And so then I noticed that it would be on uh, um, just intermittently in different parts of the house. I had different nightlights and I thought okay there's something going on and at that point I decided to try and figure out how to communicate, how to connect. I didn't know how to channel. I didn't, I didn't okay. know any of that. <laughs> so Okay, wait, wait, wait. So how did you figure out that it was trying to communicate rather than there is a short in my electrical system? Um, well, for one thing, because it's an automatic light um, mm-hmm. and because it was doing it in different rooms, it wasn't a short and it was a brand new, the, the, all of the lighting had just been, we were rehabbing a house and okay. everything had just been coated. It was all brand new. Right. So there weren't any problems. And so I knew that automatically. Um, so that was helpful, knowing that everything was full full function. Mm-hmm. And with that, though, then I just, be the intuition was there, and I had other experiences with ghosts and things like that. Um, so I, I knew, well, there's, there's something happening, and I need to figure out how to connect the dots. And part of that was learning to channel, and so I had spirit guides who who helped me and my mom, we did a, a dowsing session to get an idea of is this something that, that I can work with and is this something that would be helpful and I got all those um, green lights and so I started trying to and the guides helped me to adjust and I sat down at the keyboard and then just started doing automatic writing and at first I would try and connect the type or correct the typos and it was like stop it. <laughs> Go back and fix it later. Stop it. Because every time I would try to think it, then it would stop the flow. So I had to just give it up and let it flow and see what it was, you know, see what would come out. And so right. I would just, you know, be on and it would write and uh, then I would stop and go, oh my gosh, it makes sense. Wow. So I know that that's it. Interesting. Because I do this as well, the automatic mm-hmm. writing and the channeling. And it is amazing when it just starts flowing, you know. That's not me. That's mm-hmm. not coming from me. Yeah. And what type of messages were they giving you? Oh, um, everything from past life reincarnation to trans uh, migration of soul, to um, you know what what happens when we cross and where we go from there, and um, also wow. some future stuff. I got some stuff about uh, quantum quantum physics and um, mm-hmm. archaeology, and mm-hmm. uh, just uh, little tidbits, and some of it um, like the Einstein Bose condensate, which is a big science math thing. Um, I wrote a little bit of things that, that were in that regard, and then one about King Tut, that he was poisoned, and they found, these are things they found out uh, 15, 20 years, you know, after 
after they were written about, so something started yeah. k kicking in at 10 years and 15, and, and so it's been uh, just a, an amazing thing to see these things come to fruition, just knowing wow. that when I wrote about them, I had no clue what I was doing. No, you had I was just no listening. Was yeah, listening. right. And so how do you receive? I know I receive mostly claircognizant, um, but also there's clairvoyant sometimes and clairaudient and clairsentient, but my primary thing is the claircognizance, just the, the information just pops into my head. How do you feel like you receive? It's all across the board. Right. Because I work in dreams, and so so sometimes there will be a symbol in a dream or a mm -hmm. communication in a dream, and that will come to me. Or if, if I have somebody I need to work with, I say, let me sleep on it because I need to take a dream. Um, and the guys a long time ago said, you'll work like Edgar Casey, and they, I had um, like mm -hmm. an, an image of him sitting at a... At a checkerboard table that they showed me and then later on I actually saw a picture of that image I thought wow okay that is Edgar Casey." so he had a checkerboard table in his home that he worked with of course I have no idea I, it was just an image of a picture like you know a little three by five picture of yeah. him and I'm and that was the image I had been given and so then when it matched up it's like okay that is Edgar Casey. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure exactly who it was now, for those of you who might not know who that is, Edgar Casey was known as the Sleeping Prophet. I think he was doing his work in the 20s, maybe the 30s, early in the 1900s. And he was literally unconscious, and he was an unconscious channel. And there have been many, many books of his channelings. Right. So just right. to, be, to know that you're going to do the same work as Edgar Casey, that's pretty amazing. Well, I didn't have um, a template for how or what I was going to do, so they were exactly. giving me images of things to, sounds like, feels like, looks like, might be like. <laughs> Clues. They're yes. dropping you breadcrumbs. Yeah, and so, yes, yes. and that's, um, that, that's what I've been working on, breadcrumbs um, to the stars. And so anyway, is the... Wait, yeah. you're working on a book uh -huh. called yeah. Breadcrumbs to the Stars? Yeah. See, yeah. you can't make this stuff up. Yeah, yeah, right? it's it's I've it's been part of the name of the journal for the past three or maybe five years now. Anyway, um, well, because there's a lot that's happened. It's, it's been twenty years since I wrote this. This was just the very very tip, of the beginning, and oh, yeah. um, the 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 things that happened immediately after. Because I had to elevate my energy to be able to increase the frequency, the vibration, to up it, to for one thing, carry carry that light, carry that uh, charge. And be able to connect at that level. So that right. immediately happened. Um, one of the things was I was guided to go to uh, a shaman. And I went with a friend because I wasn't sure I wanted to be grounded. I wanted to make sure if, I, if anything happened that I had somebody that was there to hold the space. Mm -hmm. And so, so even though I didn't know things, I had an, an intuitive sense of what, what needed to happen. Right. And uh, so when I went there, <clears throat> the session wasn't going fast enough for the guides. <laughs> and so they kind of tweaked it very quickly and um, shot me out of my body. So I'm up out, and um, yeah. my girlfriend said at one point, and she looked over, she knew that I left, and she wanted to put her hand on my, you know, just call me back. She was right. She was kind of, and he was saying, no, don't. <laughs> don't. Yeah. And so um, at that point, the, the memory of how that felt was there was a, it was just black. Everything was a void. And so usually mm. when you're out of your body, you know, I've been out of body, dentist appointment when I was 14, um, watched the dentist over the shoulder and all the oh. blood. It was great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. So yeah. I, well, I didn't know until afterwards. I'm like, oh, that was a different perspective. I'm telling my mom and saying and realizing I was out watching that because I wouldn't have known. So anyway, so I had that. But this was a, a way of going into a deeper sense of awareness wow. that had everything here is basically a fiction. At that point, that's what I knew. Everything here was a, a creation. And right. um, so the only thing I could see was this little circle about about that size. So that's how far removed I was from that. And knowing that everything around was a void except for this little circle of beautiful little colors mm -hmm. in that, that circle, that energy circle. And so I knew that my girlfriend wasn't there. The guide wasn't there. The uh, shaman? I, yeah, the shaman wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And it was all a beautiful way of being. And at that point, I got um, a lot of information, a past life information about my mom, uh, the seven blocks I'm working on during this incarnation. Um, a reminder, I had had, at uh, one, one point, I had a, re, uh, a realistic dream where I was reconnecting with my, my, um, my guardian, my angel group. And it's like the circle of one from which we all come from. And I was in the circle. I had my angel book in my hand, my guidebook. 
and I was like, wow, yes, I'm taking this with me. I've got all my stuff. I know it by heart. This, I, wow, why did, how could I have forgotten this? It's so obvious. I know. I was thrilled. I had it in my hands. And then I'm coming back and I'm going through this dense kind of cloud layer. And I realize the book won't come with me. Because it's physical. I was so thrilled that I had it. And then I'm so distraught because I can't bring it back. And I know I won't be able to remember all that. And sure enough. So. Well, I know things happen how they need to happen. You know. Well, it was part of it, though, is that's what we do. And we go back and we reconnect. So in that moment, that memory that I have, of the, they're still there. Mm -hmm. It's just, it isn't overt because it isn't necessary. It's like um, if you take a test and you have all the answers first, that doesn't count. It doesn't right. count. Nothing yeah, no. here. It, so exactly. you won't get what you need until after you've completed the lesson. Right. So it steps along the way. I will reconnect and I'll have, um, like one time I'm playing the piano, it's just beautiful. I know I've passed a test. Um, winning a race and knowing I have exceeded whatever expectation I had for, for myself in that race, okay, I pass another test. Those are little checkpoints along the way that remind me that right. whatever I had set for myself, that goal has been, um, has been accomplished. So those things I work with on multiple levels, knowing that there are, um, we're always touching base, we're always checking in, right. but it was that, that euphoria of being in the circle and knowing this was my group and I had everything mapped out everything that I was supposed to do and I knew it and so right. I, knowing that I knew it and coming back unfortunately leaving the little angel book there <laughs> um, I thought okay one way or the other I am connected and so there's nothing to con be concerned about because I've got it all mapped out right. it doesn't mean I have to prove anything or do anything to to refresh that it means it's done Mm -hmm. And so that and was a way of yeah take on the next thing. Yeah, that was the way of going back and saying right place, right time. Everything's in you know as it needs to be. Right. And there was um, with the channeling and all learning all of that, mm -hmm. being outside and having that shamanic, uh, the shamanic experience where they threw me out. <laughs> it was just a quick way to get from point A to point B. You mean throw you out of your body? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. You can't do this yeah. here. You need to do it up here the with us. The overview. The overview. Right? Yeah, it was, it come was, play with us. Your body will be fine. Yeah, yeah. well, to it. show me, to show me that the body was just a vehicle. It's it's a you know. I call it a meat suit. Yeah, yeah, it's our meat uh, suit that we lug around. It's a um, a transportation vehicle. Yeah, it is just like a car. Yeah, right. And so, um, you know, the guides that everybody works with, and we all do have guides, and I mean, just. They can be assigned to us from birth. We can call them in. They can come in as we need them, et cetera, et cetera. But we all have these angelic, spiritual, uh, non-physical helpers and friends mm -hmm. that work with us. And they don't all have names. They don't all have a vibration that we can refer to them as. Right. So have they told you how to refer to them? At one point, I went through and I had names. There were eight, eight beings that worked with me. And so... Um, primarily, one was um, Joseph because he worked with writing. Another mm -hmm. one, Sophia, was a feminine energy. Um, mm -hmm. They gave me names in terms of a guide. And then, uh, as Joseph, when my father died, mm -hmm. Joseph then segued because he was more of a of a father guide. That was an interesting an interesting departure. Yeah, and, um, I imagine a lot of a lot of metaphysical things happened with that transition. And then a new guide came in. The guide, uh, the one I work with now, his name is Ian. But the ones who are with the, the channeling, it's multiple. It isn't. It isn't. It isn't a one-off. It's a. It's mm -hmm. a, a collective voice. Yes. Like Abraham yes. or Theo. Right. These are collective voices. I have um, um, a trio I work with. They just call themselves the Angels of Peace. Mm -hmm. So they will often speak as one voice, and that is very common. And they speak with you, they work with you through this automatic writing. Mm -hmm. And do they work with you in any other ways? Um, it's not uh, the channeling. When I do it, and when I work with mm -hmm. this other group, they would refer to themselves as the messengers of light. The energy is a unique entity, and so it's more or less... And the energy being one of your guides that the, you refer no. to? No. I'm well, a group? No. Okay, I know it's in your book. The energy is what came through with the nightlight, okay. and it's a non-corporeal being. I had to look it up. I had to, th these again, 
This is 20 years ago. So yeah. with this happening, and it's shifting everything in my, in my whole life, my awareness, all of a sudden I'm being pulled into a, a world that now a lot of people talk about. It's just like old hat. Oh, yeah, we know these words. Well, 20 years ago, yeah. it wasn't quite so fresh, and everybody's talking about it. It was, As a matter of fact, when you were saying you were channeling, people were like, okay, there's like four channels. Right. ABC, NBC, yes. um, UH, uh-huh. you know, all these different yeah. channels, right? Yeah. So, well, now there's hundreds <laughs> all over the right. world, and everybody channels. Um, but back then, it was foreign, and so I had to figure out what does that mean, and how do I, how do I hold this space? And then the medium stuff came in when you know I, I said I don't want to deal with dead people. I just really and they said <laughs> so I can hear them laughing. And these are the guides, the guide group, the laughing because they're helping me with this energy entity, who is um, not really attached to anybody specifically, just kind of more okay. or more or less a, a traveler. Mm-hmm. And so, right. um, but still present and still mm-hmm. accompanying me because the nightlight still does its thing and it's been doing it for 20 years. 20 oh, it's still seven. doing the thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You that know, I quit. came in today fully expecting the lights to go kind of wonky today. <laughs> just because I knew you were coming. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Um, for some people, that actually has happened. I had a friend who uh, worked in a place that was also haunted. And he would have, um, when he needed to call me, he would have something that would happen. And his light, you know, if I was coming, the light would flicker on and off to let him know I was on the way. Yeah. But he was also, uh, part, of, part of his thing was he was transitioning, so it was, there was more activity around him and more assistance mm-hmm. to help him with some of those things. Um, and, you know, not only that, sometimes just being exposed to somebody else who does their reality a different way helps you open a window into having that kind of contact. Right. Um, and that's part of what we are learning is that you you really have a lot more available in terms of expanding your awareness just by being exposed to certain ideas. And when right. those happen, then then you have abilities you didn't know. They're latent, and not until you mm-hmm. have a need or an awareness can mm-hmm. you do you access them. Um, and that's true of most anything. I mean, you have to have an awareness of the thing before it can manifest in your life. Yeah. You know, I tell my Sunday school kids all the time, our thoughts are very powerful. They create what we see around us. You know, uh, uh, the sofa did not exist until somebody had an idea to create it. Right. And so that's a very simple way to look at it. But when we are even open to the possibility, then that possibility can manifest in right. our life. Right. right. Yeah, so it, how did you notice your life changing like post-nightlight? Um, well, because they gave me, I had visions. I had, I had, um, like I was guided to go to a church in, in um, which I, I learned, to, okay, I'll, I'll listen to this, this prompt. So I was guided to go to a church that I had never been to in uh, New Mexico, in Taos. And I, okay, mm-hmm. I told my mom, we're going to go to this church. I don't know what's there, but I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to go there. And so we get to the church, and the day that um, I drive in the, the play, I see a sign, I drive in, and I'm looking at this big adobe building and thinking, well, it's a parking lot. I'm like, I don't know what we're doing. We'll come back tomorrow. It's raining, pouring rain, and that's a blessing. Uh, so when it does that, not for me. The, 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 the things that were going on. Okay. Um, so and then we ended up staying at a, um, a local place that is also haunted. The energy's everywhere. So oh, yeah. um, the next morning I told her we can't go before 10. Okay. Intuitively. Can't right. go before 10. That's what the guides are saying. So at 10 we go and the, the church, uh, we go around the parking lot to the other side and then you can see the whole front. It's this, this, the beautiful classic. Um, this this was kind the of a Mexican. A, a, it was St. Francis of Assisi Church. Oh, beautiful! And so the front. What happened is at that point the doors are closed. There is a funeral, oh, and okay. so I'm thinking, okay, I was guided to be here. So in respect, just you know, to 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 stay here and wait. And at the same time, though, I was taking pictures. So I took a picture of the the beautiful door, and um, so I'm you know I. Because this is a for me, it's an amazing thing to be called here, and um, I'm not Catholic, so right. <laughs> so there's a reason like, for this Saint Francis and really guys and going, really? yeah. Okay. And um, but no, I I'm just like okay, I'm here, mm-hmm. and um, that what happened was when it opened and they came out from that moment forward, the doors was they were never shut because they this is the time of year they redo the adobe and so they're repairing mm. the church and making all that happen. And in this particular area, there's this uh, picture, a painting of Jesus. And the painting is something that when the artist created it, 
he got rid of it quickly because it, it was something he couldn't understand. Uh, it has phosphorescent elements in the paint. They didn't have it at that time, so they don't know why. There's no explanation for why, for this, why it was for why phosphorescent. It glows. Oh, wow. Why all of a sudden in the picture you hear there's a cross, there's a boat in the background. There are things in that picture that when the lights are out you can see that are not illuminated when it's when the lights are on. Oh, that's they keep it in a dark room so that it can be protected. They don't right. want it to quit. <laughs> right. And they also don't miracle. know, you know, how to describe it. So mm-hmm. that that um, it's safe. But it was also for me to see that picture and have mm. that connection, um, and it's more with an angelic realm. Um, and with uh, the soul guardians who are here around us to mm-hmm. see that these things are called miracles and they're part of our life every day. Yes. And so when I go there, I, I have experiences where that picture, I've been there three times, becomes a 3D element. And um, Really? Yes. It wow. comes out. It comes yeah. out and talks. Um, oh, and it talks to you? Yes. What yeah. does it say? Um, the most important one was that the, the cross, it had, the message had been misre- me- misrepresented. Mm-hmm. Because what happens is, instead of carrying the cross like a burden, he's putting the cross in front of him. I am the way, the truth, and the light. I'm, I am, you know, I am the messenger. The messenger of I am is one, is peace, is love. And instead, it's been used as a tool of burden, as a tool of, right. of basically torture and mm-hmm. all sorts of nasty things. And... He was, that was never his message. Instead, they've made a message of his death and crucifixion as that's, that's it, and it's completely backwards. Mm-hmm. The message is not his death and crucifixion. The, the, the message is what he said and what he believed and the, you know, the truth, the way, and the light. And so with that, it should have been in front of him. Rather, I mean, but the, people see what they need to see. In right. this, what happened was he came out in that, and he turned around and said, turn the message around from... From death to rebirth. Oh, how beautiful. From death to everlasting life. So bring it back and turn it around. Because yeah, the, message the message is not the death. The, no. the message is the everlasting life and the faith. The, the, method, the message is there is no death. You may mm-hmm. transcend. You don't have to have the physical body to be alive. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the messages they gave me. When I came back, they also told me, okay, yeah, we sent you to the church. So I said, what was, did what I was miss point? anything? Yeah. Right. <laughs> did I miss something? They said, okay, you, you got a picture of the church, and what did you do? Well, the only way I could take mm. a picture to get that full door in the way that I wanted it was to get was to get on my knees and kneel. <sighs> oh <my God. laughs> so they got me to go to the church, get on my knees, and take a picture of the door and the doorway to life, the doorway to everlasting life. It doesn't mean that it's about any religion. It's about believing in spirit right. and going beyond that to the next plane of awareness. And it's also St. Francis of Assisi, which right. is the animals are included. Nature is included. It isn't just one-dimensional. It's this whole everything that is around us that we mm. are creating and manifesting on multiple planes. And well, we why do, do you feel it was that particular church? I'm sure there are St. Francis of Assisi churches literally all over the United States. I believe the Native American element is huge. It's, it's a part of that process because they were connected yeah. to the land, and the land is represented there, and every year they redo the church. So it's got an infusion of, of love and energy of new every year. Earth, new every year. Derby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hi, this is Christy. I just want to say that we here at Radiate Wellness hope you're enjoying this podcast. It's free to you, and we hope that you find it informative and inspirational. Heck, even fun. We have just three small asks of you to help us radiate growth. First, please hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening on. That way, you'll receive a notification every time that we have a new podcast episode out. Next, please give us a thumbs up, a like, or a five-star review. If you're feeling inspired, a positive review wouldn't hurt. These two small things will help others find us when they're searching for great podcasts. Finally, Please tell your friends about the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Better yet, show them how to find us and how to subscribe. If everyone did that, we would double our audience. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Now, you had quite a profound Native American experience when you did QHHT with me. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that is a huge part of your consciousness, Mm -hmm. right? That this 
this yeah. um, connection with the Native American culture and the areas um, as well. And part of that, I think, is just an overlay because that's when I have the guides and the person who was my the shaman, you know, the Native American element is there, and I mm -hmm. have a past. I have past like memories of a oh, certain sure. road, a certain area. I've gone there and looked and said, mm -hmm. "Yep, that's it." Mm -hmm. um, right in in this part of Kansas where I happen to be from right. many lifetimes. Um, so with that, it's a reminder that that we have different ways of utilizing our space, our energy, mm -hmm. land, and um, remembering that some sometimes it's the simplest way that has the most benefit. Mm -hmm. And so not to get removed from that, uh, that's, that's a core element that always comes back, is that, uh, to remember how important our connection to land is and to... Wow. Yes. Animals and plants, and so I also have those those connections and and plant spirits and you know and fairies and things like that that I didn't really necessarily get into or or know or um, understand until I started hearing different things and seeing. Um, mm -hmm. At one point, I'm out in the yard and pulling weeds, and I hear these little voices that sound like you know like a helium, right? Like right. somebody's on helium. Um, Mother, bring the brain that we might drink. Mother, bring the rain that we might. And there, there were clouds just rolling just a little, a little to the north, and they started moving over. And there were some sprinkles, and then the clouds moved on. And I thought, it was so beautiful to me because wow. all they needed were the sprinkles. Yeah. And so the sprinkles, and then and the saying and calling it. We do that too. We don't know it, but we do that. Mm -hmm. um, I was just reading. It was so funny. A woman who had. Uh, Seattle had an uh, unexpected, unanticipated weeks up to the to the her wedding, sunny in seventy five, sunny in seventy five. The week of the wedding, rain, and the day of the wedding, blizzard. And oh, she dear. had everything planned, most of it outdoors. I've done this. I know how this works. So I, um, she had it all planned outdoors, and she had said to a few friends, she said, "Well, I'd like to have a winter wedding." <gasps> And so she said, well, nature, Mother Nature cooperated and heard me. So the pictures are fantastic. I did that with a wedding when I was married the, the first time. I was married and mm -hmm. nine weeks ahead, and I had people saying, you can't plan. It's been raining, raining, raining. It rained every weekend, like eight weekends. On my weekend, the sun came out, and it was lush and beautiful. But those are the kinds of things that we're able to do because we have a set point of, and I didn't demand it. I didn't call it. Mm -hmm. I just knew this is how it was going to work. And anybody who said it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't re register because that, that wasn't my plan. That wasn't what I had um, on, my, on my plate. So these kinds of things, in some ways, we're able to do without knowing when we don't demand or beg or, well, right. or, or set it in cement. Because right. not only when you are worrying or working around somebody else's block, you're manifesting as you work around their block. To work around their block, you have to see the block. Mm. And so with mine, there was no block. It didn't exist, so it was completely free form, and which allowed everything to fill the space the way I needed it to. So I, um, at one point, I was thinking about you know teaching something, and I had a name for it, and it, it had to do with with dreaming. And um, because when I do things, I see it on the night plane, and it comes into the day plane. And if I don't like what's in the day plane, I go back to the night plane and work again. Mm. See what am I? What am I missing? What? Where's the? Where's the obstacle? Where's the? Where is what I need to work through? Where are the rough edges? Where am I holding space for something I don't need? That's all stuff I learned through the guides and working with the nightlight and working with that energy. And um, one of the things, too, is that um, I didn't expect ET experiences. And when they told me, mm -hmm. yeah, when they told oh, me, yeah. I was, they were saying, I wanted to give it a name and say, don't be so quick to name us. Wait, do not name this because yeah, you don't label it. In a it. Box. Yeah, you label it and you limit. And so I, I really never have specifically named messengers of light. That's kind of anonymous. Um, right. I don't call them angels. I don't call them spirits or ghosts. Um, an entity, I might say an entity, or, but mostly it was the energy to allow it to be free flow, a non corporeal being mm -hmm. and essence. So that was important. Mm -hmm. So when I got, and I even wrote in here, as I was doing writing at the beginning, uh, um, it was say, no, no door opens that you are not prepared to enter. Fear will halt your step. Trust will carry you forward. Okay, mm. so that's at the time I wrote it. In uh, 2000, I think 13, was it? Um, my, the guys were working with me, and they said, you need to work on your fear. Now, I had some really 
intense things with fear. I've always been either given, like one time I was given a prompt where it said run, and I ran. Um, given another Now prompt. run as in, like in Stranger Things? Get the things. heck out. Okay. Yeah. Get the heck out. Okay. My girlfriend and I were swimming in an isolated area. Swim, this is where I grew up, so I know it like the back of my hand. These guys come rolling down in the truck, uh, crossing the water where we're swimming. It crosses over to a, another pasture. And they seem real nice. We're probably, I think I'm about 16, 17, mm. and I think they're about early 20s. And they're looking for my uncle. And so she's there with me, and we're, um, we're by a boat that's by a tree, and um, bank up out and, and away. And they're, they're going to go look for the uncle. And I, and I didn't think anything of it, and I heard a voice say, run. And I'm like, so really? I tell her, yeah. run. Oh no! You don't. <laughs> no, there's no really. There's no. When you get that message, the message you cannot you. That was you can't do anything else. No, you right. you don't think. You don't stop. You don't question. You don't argue. Mm -hmm. The minute you get that message, you have. There's no time. Right. There's no time. So so with that, it was that thing of immediate movement. And she's looking at me, and she's doing that. What are you doing? And I'm like, follow. And so we leave, and of course this is the classic horror story moment where she's doing a <coughs> cough, and I'm ready to strangle her because this is serious. Mm -hmm. They come back within a couple of minutes, and they grow, there's a grove where these about eight houses. It's a it's a summer cottage area. Mm -hmm. It's vacant. They're um, off season, so I see we see the truck come up and slowly go all around this little place looking for us while we're hiding. Oh. So that message was basically a life-saving message to redirect us to another way. And she said, how do you know? How did you know? And I said, I heard them tell me to run. Mm -hmm. And we didn't talk about it again, but that part was, um, the, even when she coughed, the, the noise of the gravel mm -hmm. under the truck and their truck engine would have muffled it. But it was my sense of... <sighs> this is serious. we got to yeah. get the heck out right, of here. Right, so, right. So with that, but the other one was... Uh, um, had to do with the fear, and uh, that was, I thought I had, you know, these other things have happened where I'm in situations that are, that are possibly dangerous, and um, <laughs> very dangerous, and yes. uh, so I've ha had that, and this time it was, we needed to work on that. Okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm good with that. Three o'clock in the morning, I hear this voice in the corner of the room, and my husband oh, is asleep. Geez. The dogs don't make any noise. The voice says, Winnie. And they can't say, it can't say it. It can't enunciate it the way we do. It's so kind of a mechanical, okay. Winnie. And I thought, and at that moment, I felt fear all the way toe to head. Oh, yeah. And I realized, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, I can't stop it. I can't stop, stop the, fear. the fear. I can't. St and I thought that's what it was about. So, so I get that freeze, which stops the transmission. And um, the deal was, it was so close, and that the, the vibration, voice was still close. It, the vibration was so foreign, mm -hmm. and it was right there. And it was from here to you know your chair that's beyond our little camera, and so probably ten feet, eight, eight to ten feet yeah. at the most. And so that's how close it was. I felt the vibration in my body, so I felt it as being, you know, near enough that, and it's foreign. So that automatic fight or flight response kicked in, and that's what froze. And so the guides at that point, you know, that's end of end of practice lesson 101. And <laughs> they they laugh and they, and they said, we we told you you needed to deal with your fear. And I thought what they were talking to was a greater awareness of us as human and our species we are conditioned Absolutely. like rats with hawks shadow run um, we are conditioned to have a fight or flight response with things that mm -hmm. are so far outside of our our knowing our faith our belief whatever it is our experience that we get the heck out or we stop everything or we go into hysterical stuff mm -hmm. um, and that's deathing that not birthing or living it's it's, it's just yeah it, it puts us right well, into how interesting that they tell you in one instance run and have fear uh -huh. and you trust it and you get the hell out of there mm -hmm. but in another instance they startle you yeah. when you're asleep in your room yes. at three o'clock in the morning yes. with a mysterious disembodied voice and then tell you don't have any fear right that's interesting. How are you to know the difference? Well, and it, the, the thing is, this was in con, 
um, it was the thing that was happening was the ETs, aliens, non corporeal beings that are not for us a common occurrence. Right. And so in order for us to deal with something that's far out of our range of mm -hmm. not knowing, we have to get over that initial fight or flight response to even have the awareness and have a communication. So they were saying, we don't want to frighten you. And if you see us, we will frighten you. So we're trying to give you an idea of why that would, why that would make a difference. And I'm like, well, I don't, I'm not afraid. And they're like... <laughs> I remember Whitley Stryber. Um, mm -hmm. He had his story. Do you remember what? Communion. The, communion. Thank mm -hmm. you. So Whitley Stryber talked about his abduction experience, and he had he was just terrified when he was with these yeah. aliens, and they said, "What can we do to help you feel more comfortable?" And he said, "I want to smell you." Uh huh. And so they uh -huh. let him smell them, and that uh -huh. somehow calmed his fear. So it's you know this uh -huh. fear is hardwired into oh, us. Yeah. You, like you talked about prey animals, mm -hmm. you know it's just a it's a reflex. It's yeah, it's natural. It is very natural. Yeah. Well, and it keeps us safe. It's a safety mechanism. Yeah, absolutely. You know, fear of spiders, fear of snakes, fear of heights. All of these things keep us safe. And so there. So it sounds like these entities, these energies, are trying to recondition you. Yeah. Yeah. To not be afraid. All of us. Um, right. Part of it, too, is like in terms of spiders. I got bitten by a brown recluse. Oh, right. I wasn't afraid of spiders. Um, I'm not afraid of spiders. But with this, with this energy, it was also a shamanic thing of, of heal yourself. And so mm. I immediately tried to figure out what do I need to do after I, I realized that this was a brown recluse bite and, and uh, it was serious. One of the things that happened as I was working through it, um, I worked with young kittens who needed to be nursed to health and right. so as I'm nursing them to health I'm getting that energy through me um, I'm also I had ordered a, a kit a, 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 which is really funny it got there within 24 hours without oh. even asking wow without uh, even asking awesome. it just it just appeared it's manifested yeah and it, it, it puts a toxin in your system that you really need to take out well when I went to the c conventional people uh, first one told me it wasn't a brown recluse. The second one gave me a, um, a special type of medicine that would close it. You don't want to close it because the venom is in there and it's activated with the inner system and it um, does necrosis. Basically, it kills all the tissues as it's oh, eating. Yeah, and it's using horrible. It food. Yeah, it hurts. Um, mm -hmm. But the information I got um, with a certain type of drink apple juice that cut the pain within th within 30 minutes. Apple juice, not pain. apple cider? Apple juice. Apple juice, interesting. Yeah, usually okay. I would do apple cider. The sugar apparently had, has something to do with numbing the pain. So so that um, there were some things I was given telepathically to do to deal with that, and then mm -hmm. later on a different, um, a different aspect for spider bites. But it also I had a vision, and in the vision which they gave to me, there's this spider the size of this room. Mm -hmm. And this, in the spider the size of this room, um, I have an egg about this size. Mm -hmm. And so I gave About the this, size of a football. Yeah. I gave, I gave the egg to the spider. And they said, why? I said, well, it isn't mine. I didn't, you know, and I don't want to harm it. It's, it's yours. And I gave it back. It was really interesting because I did somebody, um, I interviewed somebody, oh, maybe in the last two or three years, who mm -hmm. said, what you had w represented the egg. I didn't even know that that's how they put the poison in. It, to to create to set for the babies and all that. They're laying eggs in you when they bite you. Basically, it? yeah. Oh my god. That that would be that would be part of it. And so Whoa, she okay. gave me a different a different understanding of what that was about. But with my guides, it's that once they said, the basic t the basic what I get from the ETs from the guardians from my spirit guides, mm -hmm. there is one rule, one rule only. What's that? Do no harm. Mm -hmm. Because if you have that in your heart, if you have that in your essence, it manifests in your energy. And if that is at your core, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you're not going to hurt somebody accidentally. It doesn't mean you're going right. to have not have trauma. You're not going to do things that are stupid and you were, you know, all that. But if at your core, your intention is do no harm, then there is protection of mm -hmm. a higher a higher element because that is a... It's just a way that, that resonates all across the, the spheres. Mm -hmm. So when I did that, I had no intent to... I didn't 
feel vindictive. I didn't feel frightened. I felt like this is not mine mm. and this is yours. And it said you'll have no more trouble with spiders. But it was a lesson. Wonderful. And the lesson right. was healing. The lesson was working on multiple levels. And so it wasn't about being bitten by a spider. Mm. It was about having a, an education in how to work with other elements and entities and not you know, not taking it with you, leaving it, okay, that's done, that's that's on. So, you know, for, for humans, we have all of these kind of reflexes. You know, you've bitten by a brown recluse. Okay, get to emergency care. Um, do Take this medicine. Do this, do that. Elevate your limb, ice, whatever the protocol is. You know, your, our immediate response is do a protocol. But once you start living with a spirit-guided life, and really paying attention to your guides, yeah. you find out that no, there's it's a lot more complex than that. Yeah. And we never see, my point I think being that once we start listening to our guides in the spirit guided world and the non, non-physical, then we just, we see that everything that we've been taught is an illusion. It's, it's here for us. It's it here for us. And like with that, the thing I had to do for a year, I did it. I practiced detox and got rid of sugar um, mm-hmm. because the sugar fed it. Mm-hmm. So anytime I, like if I had a soda or anything, that was going to feed it. So I, mm-hmm. did, I did some things to make sure that, that I kept my body more alkaline mm-hmm. instead of acidic. Mm-hmm. Huge difference because even a year later, I felt in that spot mm-hmm. movement. And it's, it's, they're known for what that what that does. It's also known to tunnel. And so some people, mm-hmm. when you have that bite, they'll put mm-hmm. a cortisone. So they'll put something around it to keep it from tunneling, and they will remove it. They will dig it out. It, it oh. will it'll surgically remove that whole right. thing. I didn't do any of that because right. I knew that I just had to neutralize it. I had to stop it. Mm-hmm. And so to neutralize it, I had to boost my immune system. Right. And when my mom saw me during that time, she was like, "I was death warmed over." And I, I did. It was it was like having a very very severe case of the flu. Um, but, it, you know, your body's being, that little spot was going through, it's um, trying to rebuild as it's being eaten. Mm-hmm. And so, so that, but that part of it, um, if, you, if you deal with your own mortality and know that everything here is a way for us to learn and, and to process and to progress, working with the system, not against it. So the spider has a purpose, the spider has a place, and I had to figure out, you know, what was the message for me to get beyond this? And it was healing. It was self-healing, knowing that right. when I have an illness, then I will be guided to whatever I need to do. And usually it's basically about an immune... Um, immune response. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, deficiency. Right. right. And so that's what I was looking at, was to get my immune system back up so I could keep doing the... So I could do the channel at a, at a better level, at a higher level and a, of mm-hmm. awareness. And when you said, you know, what, what way does it come through? It, it comes through whatever I need it. If I need a smell, if I need an image, if I need mm-hmm. an impression, or if I need an overlay of some mm-hmm. kind, then I will get what I need. Um, w- working through a house, I went into a space that it, you know, that was it had a haunting. There was residual ener- energy. I saw different uh, layers of beings on a certain floor mm-hmm. and went through. And when they told me later that was where a family had lived and... Um, they were basically the, the caretakers and mm-hmm. owners of that house. Other people were boarders coming and going. And then there was another one who was the most recent deceased who had worked in this place and wanted to get a message to somebody else. And so she gave me the image. She always wore a scarf. And it was like, okay. So when I told somebody else, well, I see this person, she gave me the image of herself as she was younger. And she had been a student there. She died um, later, cancer. Uh, older and um, but the scarf was significant because she always wore a scarf Mm -hmm. so the people who needed to know that were able to connect the dots in the meantime lifting the energy of the space when they went back into it they said all the dark elements that had been Mm -hmm. there were gone they wanted to go they were ready to go and Mm -hmm. so they just needed a way out Mm -hmm. Um, and I that part of it um, all this stuff happened more or less because I was able to tune into and shut out the stuff that we have that keeps us in 9 to 5 block step not lock step, block step right? Um, because we cannot get outside that conditioning of this is the way you live your life, this is what you eat, this is how you um, sleep, this is how you make a living All of the, and every culture has it, it isn't just it's every single culture right? and the thing is, those are good guidelines mm-hmm. to start out with that gets you set. And then beyond that, once you get your bearings and your feet, 
then you decide your who you are, and that comes out. Mm. The first thing is just to get you started, right. and sometimes that people never get beyond that first step because they keep fighting everything that got them here. Right, and I see it like a, a recipe. The first time you make a recipe, you make it just a, according to the plan. Yes, and then uh -huh. after that, you know what to expect. You can add your own details. Yes, you can embellish, embellish. Right. Yes. Yeah, you can. You make it your own. You make it mm -hmm. taste the way you want it to taste. Um, so before we run out of time, though, I did want to ask: Do you work with clients with your intuitive abilities and I, healing? I do occasionally. Usually, it's word of mouth. Right. You know, um, because there, it's more or less a, if I'm available, then I can work with it. Because it's for me, it's more than just a session. <laughs> yeah. Because if I dream it, you know, I'm 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 working with okay, what else is coming into the picture? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I um, and so I have. Every year I, I do an event up at Weston, the Weston Ghost Tales of Weston, and I will meet, fun. see people there, yeah. Yeah, and that uh, work like with fun. work with people sometimes through connecting with that, or I, uh, I have a blog, and so sometimes... Yes, I did want to ask about that, too. You've got a blog. Where can we find your blog? Wendy's Coffee House. Wendy's Coffee House, which is also the name of one of your radio one shows. One of the shows, yeah. One of the yeah. shows. So how many radio shows do you have going on? Conscious Living, that's been yeah. going on for about nine years on Empower Radio. And, and I was on podcast. that just recently. Yeah, yeah. podcast. And, and that's a podcast. And on the KCMO. Um, right. So that's been going for nine years, so it has a, a very um, dedicated and um, solid library. Okay, there, okay. There, there's uh, four, maybe 400 shows or so, so in there. Yeah, you've been doing this a long time. And yeah. You've talked to a lot of people. Yeah. So you've got that show, and then you've got the Wendy's Coffee House. Right. And... We can put the links to the, your shows in the in the podcast notes and the episode notes. Oh yeah, yeah. right, yeah, right. So, yeah. Um, so that we can go and and read about past guests, listen to past uh, episodes, etc. Right. I just real quick, we're just about out of time. How did you even get into the radio business? That's where I started. Um, I, I as I well, okay. This is what I learned. You never say never. So I said I would never work in radio because it was too claustrophobic. So. Uh, in college, when I started in radio, I thought, well, this is just a, a you know a trial, and then I ended up in radio. I was going to be doing news, and then the first thing I heard or was introduced to when I worked at the first station was, we're cutting our news department. So I switched over to being a DJ, and then I became a storyteller, and then so so that that uh, kind of evolved news broadcasting, reporting, anchoring, you know those kinds of things. But I didn't want to be a parrot. I didn't want to just be doing, right. you know, repeating same old, same old, I wanted to go in and say, here are people who are movers and shakers. Here are people who are thought creators, who are thought influencers. And, and you know, there's some way that you can connect if you listen to somebody else who inspires you. And so I wanted to connect people, with, not necessarily with the big, you know, the big talk names and the big everybody knows who they are, but the people who are doing the job under the radar. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes those are the most amazing people and they don't need the accolades but it is really cool to hear how they have busted through all of the, the limits and the right. you have to be a star, you have to make 80 billion, you have to, you know, you don't have to. No. You don't you have don't. to. You just have to show up. Right. And, and then so the you world give says, hey, look at this, it's magic. Right. And you've got it's a wonderful magic. platform for showcasing, pe showcasing people like that. I try. Right. You try. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Try. And I you've try. got a new book in the works? Um, yeah, I do, and it's uh, it's that the breadcrumbs to the stars. I don't know if that's going to be the name of it, but right. it starts. Yeah, it, it starts with some of the things that are that are totally not in this book, but some of the experiences that has have but in been a way result. building off of the, your book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, just like the next step, yeah. right? Because yeah. you know our our abilities and our gifts and our the information that we get just is always leveling up. The energy is the nightlight is still mm -hmm. part of it. It is, yeah. but I'm sure there are new ways to work with it. It's oh, leveled yeah. you up mm -hmm. to be able to receive even more. And just the messages, I know that even with um, Dolores Cannon, mm -hmm. QHHT, and Esther Hicks, you know, they're, the messages that they've been able to gather and deliver and pass on to the world just are always in an evolution. Oh, yeah. You know, once we reach critical mass and a critical understanding, then we're able to level up to yeah. the next bit of information. Yeah. There's always an upgrade, and that's yeah. part of mm -hmm. the living. That's that's evolution. It's it evolution. is so absolutely. That's why that now instead of just four channels, there are the internet worth of channels. Everything unlimited. Everything. Now you're talking not uh, not the TV channels as I think I yes. mentioned earlier. You're talking yes. about like Esther Hicks, people and who channel, Leo, and yes, mm -hmm. Ramtha, Lazarus. Mm -hmm. um, the one I was influenced by was Pat Rodegast. Emmanuel, 
Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. There's so many of them out there. Have you ever read um, Talking with Angels from 1940s uh, Poland? No. Oh, my gosh, it was wonderful. These, uh, I'll just tell very, very quickly because I do have to get going, but... um, Talking with Angels, in French it's Dialogue avec les Anges, which is the version I read, so I'm kind of approximating the, what the English version would be. Mm-hmm. But it would be, it was um, these four uh, young people living in a commune, and it was during the war, the days leading up to the war, and all of a sudden one of, and there were uh, couples, and so one of the women all of a sudden started channeling this uh-huh. angel who gave them very prophetic messages. Anyway, it's a wonderful book, wonderful. But from the 1940s. Yeah. This is, and then yeah. Casey was, even before that, this has been in plain sight, more or less, right. for a very, very long right. time, but now it is right. reaching critical mass. Right. So many channels, so much information coming through, so many people are plugged in, tuned in, and it's tuned accessible. up. It's, it's accessible. very accessible. With the Internet, it gave us a wide-open field of mm-hmm. people who are like-minded and who are doing this and you don't have to feel like you don't have to question your sanity right because I still have people who say I, I listen to you but I don't tell my friends I <sighs> yeah. connect with you but I don't tell my friends because yeah. my community will not allow this and so it's and, you know people saying I'm so glad you're doing it because I can't and so that part of it you know that's still a, a part of this mm-hmm. the, you know the culture but it's much more common. At least people know what a channel might be, what an intuitive is, what a medium mm-hmm. is, what a clairvoyant is, what a, you know, a psychic. All mm-hmm. those different labels. When I first started, I didn't want to be called psychic because it had a certain, for me, connotation. Don't call exactly. me psychic. I I don't need that baggage. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, fine, call me psychic. <laughs> what, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I usually go you with know? spiritual medium. Yeah. Uh, you know, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's just like with our guys. It doesn't matter what you call them because they're going to resonate with the vibration yes. of it, right? Yeah, they show up. Well, Wendy, they thank you up. so much for being here with me. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. I mean, we could talk for literally hours I know, I know, I know. about <laughs> everything. There's tons of stuff going so, on. So we'll have to do this again. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Super. And thank you to Wendy Garrett for Radiating Light with the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.